Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Today on the kitchen table, I'm going to be taking the top off my Phantom 3 Pro. Uh, have a little bit of a look inside, show you for those who aren't familiar how you would take the lid off a Phantom um, and, and just generally look at the changes that are going on in there between the P3 and the P2 and also whether there's any kind of routine maintenance or general checks we can do uh, when we've got the lid off. Now, before we go any further, it's obviously traditional to have a beverage while we're discussing our drones, but this is very shiny and new, and um, and you know I need a steady hand, so uh, I'm having a pint of water. River Thames, well, it's been purified a bit, but in Thames Valley finest anyway. Cheers. Mm. So yes, let's get the lid off. As you'll have seen in my... Um, previous uh, video when I just had a, an initial look at the P3 when I got it. Uh, DJI have changed a few things. They've changed to Torx head screws, uh, which is actually very good because you're much less likely to strip those if you get the right size bit in them. And also perhaps um, another side of it is it's not something that's in everyone's standard kind of screwdriver set at home. You'd have to go out and usually get a set like this with some specific bits in it. Uh, this was actually very kindly sent to me by a subscriber a couple of months ago, and I didn't realize quite how handy it would come quite so quickly as it has the right size Torx bits in there, uh, which uh, are T, well, this one says T8 and T6. Uh, the other thing that you need to do here before you get in there is take the stickers off. Now there's two ways of doing that. You can take them off by gently peeling them. That makes it a bit mucky. Or you can do what I do and take a scalpel, craft knife, exacto knife, whatever you want to call it, and just slice through. I'm actually going to replace these because I really don't like the gold. I'm going to get something a bit more interesting. So I've just chopped away at those with a slightly dull exacto uh, blade. So uh, not, not as neat a finish as it would be if you did it properly. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do one of the forearms and then we'll cut to me finishing because the last thing you want to do is sit watching them through. The only other thing I suggest is you put a clamp on either a third party one like this one or the one that came in. Just obviously cover over the lens in case there's any scratching going on and, um, and make sure that the gimbal can't wobble and battery out. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, and by the way, I haven't done a test run on this. This is the first time I've gone near it. Um, you know, I've just slit those literally. Um, so let's see how we go. Uh, let's do this one because it's just closest. So um, there we go. So we've got the smaller of the Torx headed screws, which are now on the outer, which used to be so easy to strip. That's much better. Also, it wasn't talked down that hard by the factory, which I think was an issue with the previous one. However, it's quite long and you need to make sure it's all the way out. Let's have a look at that one. Yeah, look, there's no thread lock. There used to be a blue bit of blue dry powder thread lock on the other one. There's no now, now there's no thread lock on these outer ones, which makes a lot of sense because that was causing issues too. Great, so now we'll swap over to the bigger one because there are two here behind the motors. The motor mounts are still hex head. Um, so that's nothing different there. And I know I'm just gonna, I might need my little extension to get in there. Ah, there we go. Right, there we go. Come on out. Right, so now we've loosened those up, I'm going to invert it and tip the uh, tip those screws out. Keep everything to one side. I'm going to run my way around, and then I'll join you. Uh, we'll join you again when I've got them all up. We'll flip it over and have a look under the lid. Okay, so we've gone around and got all the screws out. And I've got them very safely in here. I just want to show you uh, for those of you who are um, familiar with the old P2. So whilst two of those uh, screws, the ones just behind the motors, are pretty much identical apart from the Torx head, again with a little bit of the blue dry thread lock there, um, the third one up near the landing leg is quite different. There's no thread lock and it's in fact, a, it's almost looks like a wood screw. It's actually got a, got a point there. So uh, you've done those. Now the next bit is really difficult. I find this really tricky. And again, it just, that with the Torx as well, it leads me to believe that DJI really don't want you going in here, um, which worries me a little bit because, you know, with the P2 
2 and shell was really easy to open and it was quite straightforward once you'd gone in once to have a lift it up, have a check, no foreign objects, check the status of your connectors and everything else. But DJI really don't want you to go into this one. So what they've done, as well as the screws, there are now some locking catches um, along here, uh, around each part. Now, the only way I found that you can, you can get them is to use something blunt, it's just an ordinary table knife, and sort of just gently tease that bit open, and then you apply loads of pressure like this and bend the bottom of the arm underneath, click, that releases it. Then again, just, just uh, gently open the gap, move yourself along, and then you can see, look, the click, you've got those released. But it's a pain and one arm is easier than the other and it's just going to take you your time. Um, if in any doubt, I'm going to have to say for the Phantom 3, unless you know what you're doing and you know, you're prepared to ha mess around with it, unless you, 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 that's okay with you, then I would stay well away from going inside, which I think is a shame. Um, you know, if you're a diehard modder, you won't care. You'll be in there anyway, drilling holes in it and all sorts, but it does make it really difficult to access um compared to the other one it, it's doable it's just you know a lot more time consuming so rather than again you watching me struggle my way around we'll come back when i've finished and i'll see you in a minute right well oh my goodness after a lot of creaking and groaning from me um and you know a lot of sweat whew, um we finally popped all the retaining tabs off um Yes, like I say, technique is get a very blunt object in and just gently kind of prise it a little bit and then apply some pressure this way to release the tabs. You'll see them in a minute when I lift the lid off, I hope. Um, and then we're gonna go very carefully because the GPS will be attached. And indeed it is, there we go, we can leave that. So what have we got here? GPS unit, much thicker than before with shielding and look, shielded cable running all the way down. So they've learned from previous issues. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna unclip that and then we've got free, free movement, haven't we? There we go. So yeah, we can see the new unit is much thicker and the shielding is looking like there's an extra layer of copper in there. <laughs> That's very well shielded indeed and quite a dense lump and you can see they've covered everything and if it isn't it's been shielded with this material so that's good so there we are Whew! the beast is revealed um and some immediate changes the biggest of which of course is that uh, the electronic speed controllers there used to be four of them and they used to have the leds on the bottom of them used to be in this part of the arms here and um, that meant that should an ESC burn out, you could take the top off, which was a lot easier, uh, unsolder a couple of connections, pull out a couple of pins, unscrew, insert the new ES electronic speed control you'd bought as a spare, and off you go. Um, in this new layout, we have no electronic speed controllers. The LEDs are coming off uh, remotely here. Um, the speed control is actually built into the main board here, here, here and here. These components will be familiar to you if you've seen the old speed controllers. And what they've done is built everything in. So there's now no physical wiring connection. The only wires are connecting the motors and the LEDs into the board here. Now that makes for a bit less strain. Um, and as you can see, they've absolutely doused everything in sealant to keep those wires still. Although, yeah, you know, they're probably not gonna go anywhere. Um, the solder joints all look very good actually, really nice and shiny, good spherical blobs there. Um, and the wiring is all kind of neatly tucked out of the way. You can see these clips that I was referring to, and you see you've got these here, here and here on each side. And it's that kind of pushing in movement that releases them against the little capture capture lugs on the inside of the shell. So that is a pain in the backside. Um, everything else is noticeably different because we've got, um, we've got no familiar friendly NASA anymore living in there, have we? We've now got the new Phantom 3 
Inspire 1 A2 inspired flight controller um, which lives in that protective housing there everything else is really very neat isn't it um, we've got the sockets are all very um, very tightly tightly in um, GPS there is they labeled where we've removed there are no unused sockets that I can see battery data there's your main power in um, no no spare sockets on this side of the board and looks like we've got one two three four screws so removing it if you need to replace it should be okay although I don't fancy remounting the various bits and I'm just looking underneath to see if we've got anything else hiding away in there no, nothing in particular uh, we've still got the USB on the front uh, so and it's going in there so even though we don't use it now for firmware updates it's there we've got gimbal marked here um, we've got compass which obviously drifts down this leg here to the bottom and then we've got view which I'm assuming means that this is the uh, this is the light bridge um, connection. All very neat and tidy and slick and not a lot else to say really. There's apart from that, I mean, you know, there's not a lot to to check. Um, the the layout has changed such that you're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with with compass. Uh, if uh, for example, Flytrex come out with a module for this, then you know there's going to be some discussion about um, about how best to uh, get, get to get the shell off um, and you just got to be a little bit careful I see some of this wiring here I don't like the way they've run they've run this yellow wire here out to one of the LEDs they run it around that side of that little post there um, I don't know it's a bit close to the clip really but other than that it is what it is. So there we go, there's the look inside. My only concern, as I say, is if one of these blurt burns out, then really, I can't, yeah, it's such a pain to get this shell off. I can imagine DJI saying, well, send it back to us, we'll replace the whole board. Now that could be quite expensive. ESCs were, were you know, not that expensive each, but there we go. But anyway, that's how, if you're desperate to get inside, that's how to get inside. If you need to check anything or you, you know, you have a problem or a crash or you want to check for loose connections, uh, of which there aren't many, um, that's it. And obviously putting it on will be the reverse uh, and putting all the screws in. Double check all the screws, please, for tightness, um, but don't over tighten, but don't leave any out. And I think we'll leave it there. There's not a lot else to say, really. It's, um, it is what it is, the inside of the Phantom 3 Pro. I hope you found that interesting. Um, thank you very much for watching. And as ever, thanks to those who subscribe, uh, who leave comments, and particularly to the people who donate and to the channel patrons whose financial support is really helpful at the moment in keeping, uh, keeping the, the videos coming. If you would like to join them and help support the channel, there are a variety of ways you could do that. Please look at the links in the description down below. Um, and uh, there'll be some couple of buttons that you can click at the end of the video as well and for those who keep asking yeah I'll put a I'll put an annotation I'll put an overlay about where you can find this um, gimbal clamp and lens cover this 3d printed sort of rubberized material which um, is very handily keeping things tidy while we take the top off right I'm going to go and wrestle with all these clips and put them back on and then I'm going to swap my water for something a bit more strong and settle my nerves so thank you very much for watching I'll see you next time back on the kitchen table until then cheers Oh, come on, you stupid little damn dog.